In some ways, it might have been better if I talked about bats instead of about bees and flowers. Because bats have no interest in the welfare of the insects that they eat. They just want to eat them. And the flies have no interest in the welfare of bats. They'd be happy if there weren't any more bats. So although partnerships like bees and flowers are quite common, unpartnerships like bats and flies are, are far more common. And as a matter of fact, bats provide us another fine lesson, similar to the ultraviolet garden, because of course they have an even more different perspective on the world than bees do. If this bat were flying about, it would be making little cries, which we couldn't hear. There we are. Now, we can't hear those, but this is a bat detector. It's an instrument that brings the bat cries down into our world. So those are echolocation cries. That bat is now getting a picture of the world, a picture of Bryson's face. It's aiming up Bryson's neck <laughs> towards, his, towards his ear, provide an extra earring. Right, thank you very much, Bryson. <laughs> and the bat. So if the world looks different to a bee because of its ultraviolet vision, how much more different must the world look to a bat since it sees through its ears? Now, when we say something like flowers use bees for their purposes or bats use flies for their purposes, what are we really saying? What are flowers and bees, hummingbirds and bats really for? Well, this is a profound question, and it's one that I want to turn to now. And I want to begin with a computer demonstration. So I have, first of all, to insert this disk into here. Buyer summary. Buyer summary. This disk is infected. Buyer summary. Buyer summary. This disk is infected. How do I get it out? <laughs> right, well, that, as you may have guessed, was in fact a fake. Um, but it might, it might not have been. Computer viruses are a real menace. But what is a computer virus? Well, it's just a program like any other. It's written by somebody. It's a very simple program, unlike, say, a word processor that does something clever and sophisticated. A virus program just does one thing, it just says one thing, it says, copy me and spread me around. Now, because computer users are always uh, spreading, uh, spreading their disks around, a program that says, copy me, begin, copy me, end, when it passes through one computer and makes lots of copies, the disk gets spread to other people, and then it gets spread to other people, and so sooner or later the whole country becomes filled with disks with, with programs that all say, copy me. It just works automatically uh, and without realizing what it's doing. A pointless sort of program, of course it's pointless, but it's irrelevant that it's pointless. It spreads because it spreads because it spreads because it spreads. Why shouldn't it spread? Since computers do exactly what they're told and the virus tells it to spread itself around. The fact that it does nothing useful on the way, may even do harm, is neither here nor there. Real viruses that cause diseases like flu are very much the same kind of thing. They're not written in computer language, they're written in DNA language. But apart from that, they're really very similar. They also say, copy me. They're also the bare minimum sort of program to get themselves copied. There's one further difference, which is that computer viruses are written by people, whereas DNA viruses arise by natural selection. Those strings of DNA that just happen to mean the instruction, copy me, those strings of DNA are the ones that will happen, that will tend to spread around. Once again, they appear pointless to us, but once again, what seems pointless to us is not the point. They're there because they're there, because they're there, because they're there. Now, viruses, whether they're made of DNA or computer instructions, have things made very cushy for them. 
there is ready-made copying machinery already in the world. In the case of DNA viruses, that ready-made copying machinery is our cells. In the case of computer viruses, it's computers, aided by people carting disks around, constituting a kind of paradise for a self-copying computer program. But where does all this lovely copying machinery come from? It doesn't just happen, it has to be made. In the case of computer viruses, it's made by humans. In the case of DNA viruses, it's the cells of other creatures. And who makes those other creatures? Those humans and elephants and hippos whose cells make life so easy for viruses? Well, the answer is that other self-copying DNA makes it, makes those creatures. The DNA that belongs to us, us humans, us hippos, us elephants. So what are big creatures like us and trees? What are big creatures for? For whose benefit are they? Well, from the virus's point of view, they think we're put in the world for viruses' benefit. But that's not a very satisfactory answer because it doesn't explain why we should bother to be there in the first place. So once again, we have to shift our perspective, shift our point of view. So let's go back to the computer viruses to look for an answer. Writing a computer virus program is child's play. Any fool can do it, which is why the silly little twerps who do have nothing to be proud of. But imagine something like a computer virus, which instead of having a ready-made computer already set up to obey its instructions, had to start from scratch. Now that's more of a challenge. It couldn't just say, copy me, because there's nothing there to do the copying. To be truly self-copying, in a world without ready-made computing and duplicating machines handed to it on a plate, our, com our computer program would have to be a lot more complicated. It would have to say, make the machinery needed to copy me. And before that, it would have to say, make the parts with which to make the machinery that you need to copy me. And before that, it would have to say, gather the raw materials that you need to make the parts, etc., etc. Now, this more elaborate program needs a name, and I'm going to call it the Total Self-Copying Program. The Total Self-Copying Program has to have control over more than just an ordinary computer. It's got to have a hand. It's got to have something like an industrial robot to pick things up and manipulate them, because it's got to assemble something like itself. Here's an industrial robot picking things up and dropping them into a box. It's very similar to the kind of industrial robot that's used in factories for making cars. And if you can have a factory to make cars like this, you could have a factory to make robots exactly like itself. But that's not enough, because this robot can only pick up the things that are within reach. In order to run our total self-copying program, it's got to be able to move around the world to pick up its raw materials. It's got to have something like legs. In fact, it would have to have something like this. 